At DTU NanoLab, Clevin is our preferred layout tool. It has a really simple interface, which makes it easy and straightforward to use. And yet, if you're looking for more advanced features, such as making layout from MATLAB scripts, you can also do that. In this tutorial, we'll however stick to manual drawing of geometry. In this short tutorial, we'll look at the basic features that will get you up and running in making your own designs. We'll start by having a look at the Clevin interface, then we'll start a new empty design and explore some of the drawing tools to draw out simple structures. While drawing, we'll focus a bit on drawing precise structures either by using snapping grid or using the properties editor. Naturally, precision is a key element when drawing microstructures for your own design. We will also look at how to generate more advanced geometry using Boolean operators, i.e. by adding geometry or subtracting geometry to make more advanced shapes. Once we're comfortable drawing geometry, we will look at the hierarchy and instancing of symbols. This is really the core of a layout tool like Cleaving and a fundamental concept that we will explain further when we get to this part. The interface of Cleaving is pretty straightforward. Up in the top you have your menu bar, below you have your toolbar, over on the left you have your mode selector, and over on the right you have your layers. So currently the drawing area is empty and that's because we don't have a file yet. So let's just create a new file. Yours might look a bit different from mine. It will depend on how the background is set up. So if we just go to the background settings, you can see mine is set up with a circle. Yours could be set up with a uh, five inch uh, mask, but since we're drawing a four inch wafer, I uh, have it set up to be a four inch wafer. So it's just the outline of uh, sort of our bounding box that we have to draw inside. Now you can see on the left, there's quite a few drawing tools, but we'll just look at a few of them and then you can explore the rest on your own. So in particular in this course, we'll be using the rectangle tool. So to draw rectangles is very easy. You select the tool and then you can simply draw out rectangles. Now you of course want to draw precise rectangles. So there's two ways of going about this. So you can change the grid and then you can snap to the grid. So the grid is set up under layout, grid setup. So you can see currently my snapping grid is set up to 20 by 20 micrometer increments. So if we are to use this, we can zoom in quite a bit here until we get to maybe around here. So if we take the rectangle tool, you can see it now snaps to the grids here. So I can draw out a box in 20 micrometer increments. So we could draw out a 200 by 100 micrometer box. So you can see down the left hand corner, it says width 200, height 100. So this would be one way of drawing out a box to a fixed size. Now, if you use this method, you might have to go in and change the grid snapping all the time to, uh, if you want to draw finer stuff than 20 micrometers, I would have to go and change the, the snapping now. So I rarely use this option or this mode of drawing. I, uh, so let's uh, delete out this box and draw a new one. The way I usually draw is I draw a random box and then I use the uh, properties inspector. So you find that under edit here uh, or alt enter, which is of course much faster. So whenever you have drawn something, you can always change the properties of that object with this properties uh, inspector. So let us center this one in zero and then draw it out to be 200 by 100. And then it will center the object around uh, zero. So I found this to be a uh, much faster way of drawing precise because I don't have to change the grid snapping all the time. We have several other drawing tools over here and I will not go through uh, so many of them, but to demonstrate some of the Boolean operations, let's try to draw a circle. So we can put a circle here and um, let's just inspect this one in the properties editor. So you can see, even though we had the uh, snapping tool enabled, it still came out with this weird radius. 
And if you're drawing something precise, this, this would probably not be what you ever wanted. So let's just enter uh, 120 micrometers in radius. And then let's explore a couple of the Boolean tools. So the Boolean tools is really how you can get more advanced geometries by subtracting stuff from each other. So to use the Boolean tools, you'll have to select two objects. So I got this one and then I shift click this one. So now we got two objects selected. And that means now that these Boolean tools have been enabled. So you can of course merge these two into one polygon. You can take out the intersection between them like this. I will just undo. You can also XOR, which will uh, take this geometry, or you can uh, subtract the two from each other. And subtraction, this will work. Um, it is the first selected minus the other. So this would give me this. And if I had selected the objects in the different order, it would give me this instead. So these tools will make you um, be able to draw a bit more advanced geometries, but the base geometries will most often be uh, squares, circles, maybe some trapezoids, maybe some polygons. Um, now another tool that we'll just uh, a drawing tool that we'll just look at is the wires. <clears throat> this can be quite uh, powerful for creating wires, as we will for our pressure sensor. There's a, a couple of uh, things you have to be aware of when you use this tool, though. So to use it. You simply select it and then you can click where you want your first part of the wire. And um, <clears throat> I'll just zoom out so we can actually get to draw something. So the next click will then place a vertex and then subsequent clicks will place individual vertices. And when I'm done with my wire, I right click and then I have my wire. So all that I have drawn is simply a, uh, a line and then Cleaving has created a wire around it. So you can of course go and edit this because the width of this wire is of course something you can determine and also the end style of this wire. So if we just Alt Enter to go and change the properties. First of all, you can see all your uh, vertices and of course you can go and change these. So if I was not happy with this one being at minus 100, I could of course overwrite this to be minus 120 and then I could update. So you can go and change the geometry in this way as well. Um, you can change the, uh, the width of your wire. So we could down, take it down to 50. And then we can of course also change the end style. So right now you can see it's round. I would often prefer to be uh, flat, but that is of course something you can uh, choose of your own style. Now, one very important thing about wires is that most layout tools or um, manufacturers uh, who make photo masks for you, they might not interpret this wire in the way that you expect them to. And also the maskless aligner tools in the clean room might not interpret this one correctly since it is a wire. So the way to get around that is always once you're done drawing, convert your wires into polygons and you convert them under uh, layout special no sorry under edit and shaping convert into polygons so now you can see this one has now been created into a polygon instead of a wire we can just alt enter and then we can see all the vertices that uh, this is made up of now. Now, another important drawing tool is the text editor. So you can insert text with this tool. So it's uh, very simple to use. You click where you want your text. Then you can enter your text label. It could be a chip identifier like this. Now, as default, it comes out to some sort of size and with some font, you can of course change that with Alt Enter to change the properties. So you can change your uh, font to something else. You could uh, change the size, let's do 200. And if you can of course choose the position of the uh, text. You can also choose what layer it appears on. Currently we only have one layer, so there's only one option here. You can even rotate it. 
and uh, then hit OK and it will update to this font. Now again, uh, some mask manufacturers and some uh, drawing or some uh, you know printing tools in the clean room might not interpret a text object correctly. So again, once you're done with your design, go select all your text objects and uh, turn them into polygons with the control Q. So now this has, uh, this text object has been turned into 12 polygons. And so they're individual polygons. So you can see like this. And now uh, all tools should be able to uh, to both print and interpret this geometry correctly. Now, so far we have only been discussing how to draw simple geometry, but now let's look at the hierarchy and how we can actually make a uh, chip or a wafer layout that is in a hierarchical order. So this is really the power of these layout tools. That is the hierarchy and the way you can instance cells or symbols onto the uh, wafer layout. So let's make a uh, sort of dummy chip. Now, um, first of all, you can see right now our main layout here is called main symbol. I, uh, mostly for historical reasons, I often change this to be called wafer instead. Now, to really uh, illustrate this, we need at least one more layer. I usually like to work with an outline of my chip. So I'll create an outline layer and it's just a visual guide to myself such that I can see how large my chip is. So we'll create another layer. We'll call it layer zero. So we have it here. We'll double click so we can change how it's rendered. First of all, to uh, make it clear that it's just an outline, I'll just rename it outline so I can remember. And also, I don't want it uh, shaded. I want it uh, to just be really an outline. So we'll choose no shading or no fill and just with a line. So now it will draw like this. So let's draw a rectangle to illustrate the boundaries of our chip. Let's say it's a 10 by 10 millimeter chip. So we'll just draw out a random rectangle here and then we'll Alt Enter to change it. Let's center it at zero in the design and let's make it 10 by 10 millimeters like this. So now we have our chip outline centered here in the center of our wafer. Now currently this is just a rectangle on our wafer symbol. Uh, but we want to change this into its own symbol. So the way you do that is you combine so it's a bit misleading, the word maybe, but you basically combine this geometry into a symbol. So when I click now, I get the opportunity to name it. So we will call this one chip one. And so not a lot changed over here, but in the symbols list, you can see we now have a chip one. So we can now go and then we can edit this chip one. So everything that we do now just happens inside chip one. So we could go and we could create a array of uh, contact pads down here. So we will take our rectangle tool, we'll draw out this random contact pad, we'll uh, change it. So let us, let us position the bottom left corner of the chip at 500 by 500 micrometers and let's make the chip maybe 1000 micrometers, or sorry, make the contact pad 1000 micrometers by 1000 micrometers. So a very large contact pad. Now let's make an array of this to go across to make four or five of these. So the way you can do that is you can make a, and a symbol out of this one. So you could go to arrange, combine, control L, and now we'll make this into its own symbol. So we'll call this one contact, contact pad. It's anchored in its bottom left corner. That's fine. So now we can instance this across and you'll also see uh, now under chip, we now have a contact pad symbol. Let's instance this across. So that would be under edit and duplicate. 
So let us make five of these and let us instance them with something like 1800 micrometers apart. So it's not purely symmetric. Let's, uh, let's change that spacing. So you can Alt Enter. And then we can just maybe bump that one up to 1900. Maybe it will be slightly more symmetric. So this is, of course, something you could uh, fiddle with if you want it uh, to be looking very nice and symmetric, maybe like this. So now we have an array of contact pads here. So you can see in our hierarchy, so we have wafer, chip, whoops, and then uh, we have contact pad in the end. So the power of this is, of course, that um, we can now instance this chip multiple places on the wafer. So if you remember from uh, from a range or from, uh, sorry, from edit, we can duplicate this across and we can make like a four by four array of this particular chip. So now we have an array of this particular chip layout. Now, if we suddenly realize that the contact pads, they're not supposed to look like this. They're supposed to have a, a hole up here. We could go in, we could make a, a circle to make this change that we have suddenly realized we need. So we select the rectangle, we select the uh, circle, and then we subtract the circle to make this particular cutout. And now everything has a, this change has propagated onto the chip such that all contact pads look like this. And when we go to the wafer, all chips have this feature. So this is really the power of the hierarchy that you instance uh, everything onto uh, to uh, sub symbols such that you can easily go and change geometry and then it propagates to the entire wafer. In this mindset, you should basically never draw geometry on the main symbol itself. You should never have, you know, free lying uh, geometry like this on your top level cell. That should never happen. Everything on the top level cell should be instances of your chips, your alignment marks, and your test structures. And maybe if you have some graphical elements like, you know, a company logo, DTU logo or similar, it should also be a symbol that is instanced onto your main symbol. So I think this covers it for the sort of introduction into Clavin. I hope most of this makes sense. And now, at least for the uh, Cleanroom course, now we are ready to start up our session in uh, drawing or altering the masks for the pressure sensor.